How would those two individuals ever cross paths? How does my son cross paths with the murder and is and 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 he's in with in the same cell as a murder? How how does that happen? Phyllis Loriano's 19-year-old son Micah was found hanging from the top bunk of his cell last month. His hands and ankles were tied together. In a criminal complaint, investigators say it happened just hours after he was put in the same cell as 24-year-old Jackson Vogel. He's serving a 20-year sentence for trying to kill his mother in Two Rivers when he was 16. Loriano had 18 months left on a three-year sentence for crimes in Waukesha and Columbia counties that include robbery use of force, first degree recklessly endangering safety, and substantial battery. His mother, however, never lost hope. You know, he was amazing. Just had his troubles, you know, that we all do, challenges. This is a picture from the last time Phyllis saw her son alive, about a month before he was killed. When he came to the visitation room, he said, Mom, thank God that you came when you came because I can't even go to the chapel without being harassed. Phyllis says her son was beat up at least twice during the four months he spent at Green Bay Correctional. Most recently, she says gang members attacked him when he was coming out of the shower. She says they viewed him as a snitch. While she doesn't believe those incidents are directly related to his death, she says they should have raised a red flag that her son was at risk. I think he would have killed him regardless. And that's, uh, he even states that. I hate people. A criminal complaint shows a handwritten note in Vogel's cell stated, kill all humans. It also had a profane statement written about Laureano's race and sexual orientation. Corrections officers also claim Vogel admitted to the murder because he was bored and it created ecstasy, strangling someone and then hog-tying them like a pig. Attorney Lonnie Story is now representing the Laureanos. The most atrocious thing out of this entire uh, fiasco that occurred is that uh, Michael only had 18 months left to serve uh, in that facility. They totally, completely, horribly failed Micah in his classification. Story is also representing families of inmates who died in Wapan Correctional. For Loriano's death, he says his firm intends to file a civil rights lawsuit that will outline the prison's inability to train, supervise, or protect. Micah um, had already been beaten and abused in the, the previous facility. He was going through that at this, this facility. And then to house him with a psychopathic murderer or, or homicidal uh, individual like uh, Mr. Vogel, it's just, it's unfathomable that they would put uh, someone with 18 months left on their sentence in the same cell with someone who uh, stabbed his own mother. Story says Loriano wrote prison officials several times voicing his safety concerns. We tried to verify that claim with the Department of Corrections. However, the agency told us it would not be answering our questions at this time as an investigation is ongoing. The DOC did provide us some information earlier this month for a previous story. In a September 5th email, the agency told us Loriano and Vogel had previously shared a cell without incident and neither had incidents with past cellmates. The DOC also pointed out at any time an individual who feels unsafe is able to request that they be moved for their safety. These requests are evaluated immediately and moves are made if need be. Neither Loriano nor Vogel requested to be moved. You're putting him with a murderer? So now you're a minute that, that, and that doesn't even make sense. Phyllis shared with Fox 11 a handwritten letter from her son. She says she pulled out of her mailbox two days after his funeral. The date on it shows it was written one week before his apparent murder. And when Micah sent that letter, he, he painted a picture for me, you know, telling me he didn't have glasses. They lost his glasses. How do you lose someone's glasses? Loriano wrote to his mother he was in temporary lockup because he was under investigation for something that went down two weeks earlier. He says he wasn't eating for days and was on the verge of committing suicide at one point and that nobody is telling him anything at all about this. Loriano also told his mother he's praying so hard that they move him to the MU, which he describes as the loony bin, but for inmates that are too vulnerable and overly unsafe in general population. With some of the threats and stuff that he was getting, he was, he was fearing. Later in the letter, Loriano writes to his mother, I'm turning 20. That is absolutely crazy to me, Mom. I'm glad I can live another year, and when I come home, I'll be 21. I miss you so much beyond belief, and it hurts a lot. 18 more months and I'll be home to you. In his letter, he just was hoping um, that someone would help him. And he had that anticipation that 
someone was going to be able to help him. I don't know what went wrong there. Have you guys been able to get any answers to some of these questions? I haven't. I can't even get, I can't, no, no, I have, no. The Department of Corrections isn't answering our questions right now. Some of the questions we have include, did they know Lariano feared for his safety? If he was beaten up inside the prison, why wasn't he deemed an at-risk inmate? And perhaps the biggest question of them all, why was he put in the same cell as Jackson Vogel? Our bosses, our captains and lieutenants would tell us that we could not discriminate. I mean, you know, sometimes we'd have to put the rival gang members together. It didn't matter because it was a short-term thing. In 2020, Joe Vertigan retired after 27 years as a corrections officer at GBCI. In a story earlier this month, he told us there were no set guidelines for pairing inmates at the prison. It was typical uh, to sell to sell up, you know, different races, different religions. I mean, we tried to avoid that, but sometimes if, if we were short on, on, on bed space, sometimes we didn't have a choice. May, at least make it make sense. Doesn't make sense. Vogel is charged with first degree intentional homicide as a hate crime in Lariano's death. He's being held on a $1 million cash bond despite not being set to be released from prison until 2036. We'll continue to dig for answers from the state on this case. For Fox 11 Investigates, I'm Ben Krumholz.